This talk is Smashing the Font Scaler Engine in Windows Kernel. I'd like to give one reminder before we start to evaluate the session at the back of the room with your badge. It's really important to the organizers to know what you think. So thank you for coming, and without any further ado, here are your speakers. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ling Chuan Li, and this is my colleague, uh, Li Chan. And today we are going to talk about smashing the font scalar engine in Windows Kernel. Hello, everyone. Uh, basically, these are the agenda for today's presentation. First of all, we will go through the introduction regards the true type font. Then we will talk about the design of our father targeting of the true type font on Windows platforms. After that, the possibility of attack vector of the true type font, both locally and remotely, will be discussed and demonstrated. Lastly, we will demonstrate our finding of the true type font vulnerability that have discovered by our father. So uh, basically, Windows support two broad categories of font, font, that is GTI font and device font. The GTI font, which are based in Windows, come in three types, raster, vector, true type, or open type. Here, we would like to introduce the foundation of true type fonts. For instance, the outlines of a grid outline consists of a series of controls. The font unit or F unit describes the true type fonts found points location in the M square. The outline of the characters or grid in true type fonts are made of straight line segments and quadratic Brazil curves. In creating the grid outlines, a type designer used an imagination square, which is called M square, typically as shown in the picture in the slide. The M square enclosed the capital of Q. The grid is two-dimensional coordinate system, like S axis describes the movement, movement in horizontal direction, and Y axis describes movement in vertical directions. Okay. Actually, basically, this slide summarizes the process grid to be displayed on raster device. First, the outline stored in font file is scaled to the requested size, and the scaler converts font unit to pixel coordinates and outlines to the size requested by application. The interpreter will execute the instructions associated with glyph and grid fits. The outline is then scanned and converts to produce bitmap that can be rendered on the targeted device. The scaler will create the necessary bitmap at a particular resolution. To solve a, the low resolution issues, each grid includes a set of instructions that instruct the font scaler to modify the shape of the grid. Okay. Font scaler consists of a set of API functions. During the reverse engineering, and we have this identified few important functions for engine exported interface. That include Win32KFS open fonts, where this API function normally is used to initiate the font scaler pro process. Others API such as Win32KFS new grief, Win32KFS control scan, and etc. And the API function also include for engine internal interface, engine converter functions, and engine support interface. And all these API are shown in this slide. Here are more API functions for bitmap related instruction virtual machine and, uh, and for font, struct font structure parser. And in this section, we will discuss the bug hunting with our true type font puzzle. In our true type font puzzle, 
we will fit the Windows operating system with the crafter font generated by our father. There are two actions included in our father for every test case. Firstly, open the font file using fontview.exe and secondly, display the default character map contents in the font file. Basically, fuzzing is divided into two categories, thumb fuzzing and smart fuzzing. The concept of thumb fuzzing is simple. It fuzzes the targeted file without concern of the file structure. It means that the fuzzer will do the pipe flipping from the beginning until the end of the targeted file. Well, smart fuzzing is totally different. It fuzzes with the consideration of the file structure such as the relations from one section to another section. In the process of part hunting, the file structure parser is very important to understand the hierarchical structure format. In this case, we develop our own true type font parser and open type font parser in 010 binary editor template. There are few advantages of 010 binary editor. First is, it provides 30 days trial version and supports multiple platform. Besides that, there are many free binary templates provided, such as Bitmap, WinZip, Media Player Parser, and etc. And this is the screenshot of our binary template using the 010 binary editor. Before we develop our own true type form uh, binary template, there are many things we need to understand, especially the structures of true type fonts. First of all, the true type font begins at byte zero with the font offset table. And this table is divided into five subtables. That are SFNT version, number of version, search range, entry selector, range shift. And as mentioned previously, a basic font is composed of multiple tables specific in each header. A table name can have up to four letters and this slide shows the header of a TTF binary file. The font table directory entries is followed after the font offset table. Each font table directory header consists of four, that are tag, checksum, offset, and finally, length. And here is the example of font table directory. As you can see, each value of the font table directly has relatively with the particular font payload. This slide lists the required tables in font offset table. That includes CMAP, Glyph, Head, HHEA, LOCA, MASP, and etc. However, they also can include some optional font table, such as CVT, EBDT, EBLC, EBSC, and etc. And some more. And all the tech name for each table must register under Apple Developer Technical Support. For the true type font fuzzer, please remember that, that never ever use thumb fuzzing methodology to do the pipe flipping for these four fields. That are checksum, offset, length, and table. Checksum calculation is very important in order to verify the verification of a font table. If the checksum value is wrong, it means the font file will corrupt and the fuzzing process will fail. And the Python code in this slide represents the calculation of checksum value for the data section while doing pipe flipping fuzzing process. Another thing we need to highlight is that the checksum calculation implies four boundaries for the entire tables. It means that if any remaining space, it will be paid with zeros. Besides the checksum values, another important values are offsets and length values. The offset values should always point to the beginning of the data structures. Thus, the length value must always equal to the size of the data. Therefore, during the fuzzing process, the changing of every data location and contents should always update the particular values of offset and length under the font table directory. This 
this slide shows you how the smart fuzzing technique can be used to fix the checksum value. As shown in the slide, the byte flipping changed the first byte of contents from 00 to 01. And our code will update the new checksum value for each byte flipping test case. So now let's jump to the TTF font fuzzer. Fonts can be fast via different methods, either one byte, two byte, or four byte flipping, and etc. However, no matter how the targeted font is fast, as mentioned earlier, the value of checksum, where every byte flipping test case required to fix the checksum value. Some important functions are needed to ensure the fuzzer works. The first is lock font structure. This structure plays an important role in terms of defining the font attributes. Calling the create fonts indirect function should able to return a font handle. However, the function is unable to work with lower level font API. Therefore, the API functions such as get fonts data, get glyph index, or ext text out with eto glyph in text flat able to fix this problem. To, su to sum summing up the overall process of the fuzzer, there are three important steps. First is the font fuzzer will automate the installation of the crafter font in C Windows font folder. Secondly, the fuzzer registered a window class and create thing a new windows to display the font text. Lastly, it will uninstall the fonts from the C Windows folder fonts folders. And this slide shows the partial program of creating a log font object. The log font structure is called to define the attributes of a font, such as height, width, and etc. The add font resource ex function adds the font resource from the specified file to the system. The create windows function create a pop-up or child window with an extended window style. And as soon as the attribute of font is well defined, the character map of a true type font has to be defined as well. Without defining the character map, even if a particular font encounter problem, the vulnerability will not be triggered. Defining a character map is very subjective, where defining the entire fonts of particular fonts will not be a good op will be a good option. However, the performance of the fuzzing process also will be decreased since it is designed to call the entire character map. Therefore, in our fuzzing program, we define to display the popular font that is from character 0 until character 255. We also define the font, range, font size range increase from size 1 to 100. And the size, of course, may change any time you, if you want. But please, please remember that the font face name must change according to the name of the font you would like to test. Some Win32 API functions provided by Microsoft to call the physical font could be used by applications that need to work with fonts at lower level. In this TTF fuzzing design, we use ET, ext text out w api function work together with eto glyph in text flat this slide shows the screenshots of our fuzzing process and as you can see the fuzzing is displaying the crafter fonts while we are fontsview.exe but the text displaying process failed because of the invalid true type font so I'll pass the rest of the presentation to my uh, colleague. So I will continue the section. Um, in this section, um, we will go through the fuzzing infra we have been set up for our TTF font, font fuzzing purpose. And auto fuzzing in cloud service is common today. But for us, there are two things we are very concerned. The first is the cost of cloud service is expensive and the hardware spec for us is not so 
at once. And the second thing is we will disclose our sample and POC to the vendor. And finally, we decide to use two custom build server with memory 32 gigabyte, storage one terabyte in our fast farm specific for through type phone fuzzing on Windows platform. Each of the server running Ubuntu operating system and able to switch on 16 to 18 Windows 8 Pro operating system. And total fast case per day is around 300,000. And we use the advantage of Windows 8 OS where the kernel debugging able to be connect through network and this make the reverse engineering easier than previous operating system. And the setup process is very simple. You just need to run execute two command in debugging operating system to configure the port number and debugger IP address. And the result of the command will generate the key. And in the debugger OS, you just need to launch and execute the WinDBG with the key and port number you configured previously. And the overall of our fuzzing infra is shown in the slide. And this is the physical how how the uh, server look like. And now I would like to talk about something regarding how to launch the Windows kernel font attack vector. And the GDI actually is uh, has long been identified as a significant kernel attack, and it is part of the core operating system component. And based on our research, we have identified that the GDI is one of the most easy accessible remotely. And as mentioned previously, the GDI font best in Windows consists of three types that are raster, stroke, and true type. But the rest of the presentation slide, we will only focus on TTF. And with the probability of the usage of the font, the vulnerability of font has been identified as one of the likely weak point and accessible via various computer applications such as browser, Microsoft Office document, Adobe Portable document, and etc. As soon as a vulnerability font is identified, the attack can be launched from local and remote to increase the attacker privilege as super user. And of course, the local Windows kernel exploit always is the most straightforward by copying and executing crafted font on victim computer. And the remote attack is possible by using a little bit, a little trick to embed the crafted font in Office Word file or through web page. And here's the example of crafted font that open in victim computer in order to rest the user privilege as super user. As mentioned previously, we include two tests in our fuzzing process. The first is open the crafted font via fontview.exe, and second <coughs> is displaying the default character map that is contained in the font file. And in a web based attack scenario, an attacker could host a malicious web page that is designed to exploit this vulnerability and then convince a user to view the web page. And of course, attacker cannot have no way to force user to view the attacker control content. Instead, instead, an attacker would have to convince user to take action. Uh, for instance, getting them to click a link in an email address or in instant messengers message that take user to the attacker web page or by opening an attachment sent through email. And as you can see, the attacker can easily use CSS font face property to easily embed the crafted font onto the web page. And beside the web page, the remote attack could be launched through a crafted Microsoft Office Word file. Amended font into a Microsoft document not as easy as amended into a web page. Before embed, embed the TTF into Microsoft Office file, the TTF font format have to, has to convert to ODTTF file format. ODTTF actually is an amended font file type used in Microsoft XPS and Microsoft Office 2007 format. And the file type refer to an obfuscated 
subsetted font based on the font used in the original document. And the file can be extracted from the DOCX by renaming the file to zip and so the archive can be browsed and extracted. And to perform amended font obfuscation, a 128-bit or just 16 byte of GUID is generated for the font to be obfuscated. And as soon as the Microsoft document is renamed and unzipped, the Office file is adopted an SML-based file format. And this new file format able to improve file and data management, data recovery, and extend the support with the earlier versions. And to force the DOCX to use the crafted obfuscated TTF font file, font table.xml file which is located in word folder has to be edited and set the value of W font key to perform and draw operation on the first 32 byte of the TTF font file. And this slide show the program of perform the XOR operation for GUID key with the first 32 byte of the TTF binary file. As so in the slide, the odd value of the first 16 byte of the TTF binary file will perform the XOR operation with the GUID key from key 15 to key 0. Byte by byte. And to explain more detail, the first byte of TTF font equal to value 00, zero will perform XOR operation with the key 15, which is equal to 34. And this process will be continued until the end of the key 0 perform XOR with the 16 byte of the TTF, which is equal to 46. And the same operation will be performed for the next 16 byte of the TTF font file. And inside the document.xml, we can define the font name in the WR fonts and WASCII element. We also need to define the font size at the WSGN, WSGCS element. And font size in the document.xml is expressed as half point value where where value 80 in this case equal to font size 40. And for this research, we also come out some simple script to simplify the process of embed, embedded the TTF in DOCX document. And here in this section, we would like to share some findings of our fuzzing process. Microsoft provide a very cool WinDBG extension, so-called exploitable, plug in to evaluate the trace down file. The tools were, was created by MSEC security team, and now the latest version even support ARM. And by the way, our experience tells us that the tools does not help in Windows kernel crash dump analysis. We still need to depend on a 16 WinDBG command on analysis. For instance, analyze dash V or tracing Kung Fu like such as PH or TH. You also may consider uh, virtual KD combined together with the VMware and virtual box to improve your kernel debugging performance. And before I start to talk about some bugs in TTF, uh, I would like to explain a little bit more detail regarding what is a grief and FPGM. The FPGM is used to define function and instruction. There are two functions, ITRP underscore FDEF and ITRP underscore ENDF, used to define a block of code as routine with instruction. And after the definition, we could call and execute the function using ITRP underscore call or ITRP underscore loop call in grief instruction. The grief tables basically is the table must contain all data required to construct the complete character set as specified by CMAP table. And for the first finding, the mutation happened at frac 65 until frac 78 and x coordinate 0 until x coordinate 39. The mutated frac value and x coordinate value will be processing in function fhg underscore execute grief and the controllable x coordinate value in function Edwards must scan will cause the copying process all right to non-p 
page area kernel memory. And as you can see, WinDBG extension exploitable plugin does not help anything in reverse engineering. And we need to execute the command like analyze dash v to get detailed information. As you can see from the slide, there are a variety of non page area memory at the instruction Win32K, Edwards must scan plus 5B. And here I would like to do some demonstration. So basically, our fuzzing infra is uh, this is uh, VMware running Windows 8 Pro operating system, and this is a Windows 7 is running WinDBG. So both systems actually connected through um, kernel debugging through network using WinDBG. So go to desktop. If you refer, refer back to the folder, there is a source font father dot Python file. I use the Py to exe to convert to the exe, and this Python file is used to call the crafter phone father underscore to the TTF. This is able to crash the Windows 8 Pro operating system, and all the crash process were monitoring by WinDBG. So as you can see, the crash process will intercept by the WinDBG. And this slide show you the second finding of our fuzzing process. The picture at the top is FPGM table in crafted font. ITRP underscore execute process the instruction of FPGM table and define a routine of broad code started at offset address 13A3 until 14.2F. And this allow us to control the length value in the FNT underscore function define structure and override the number of bytes to execute larger than normal. And this will cause the infinity loop call for ITRP underscore call execute in grief table will cause the win Windows kernel memory exhaustion. As you can see, the WinDBG extension exploitable does not help in crash dump analysis and just provide a very simple information. And against WinDBG command analyze dash we provide more detailed information regarding the crash dump. And here again, I would like to do some demonstration. For the bug two, for the second bug. Then Basically, in this folder, as you can see, there is a crash.html. And this crash.html is configured a font page, which is a font name we are going to call. It's equal to Droid. 
and this is calling the father underscore two dot ttf, which is inside the same folder, and the format is equal to true type. And currently, we are calling the font size equal to nine. And the character map we are going to call is three hundred half. So you just open and display in Google. You need to put a full screen. I believe this is a resolution problem in um, Google Chrome cannot display. Never mind if we go, we move on. So I try to show the second remote kernel, and this is a library, library folder. In this folder, actually contain all the important components to generate the DOCX file. And in this folder, word folder, as you can see, document.sml. In this SML file, we configure is calling the droid font face, and font size equal to nine. As I mentioned before, you have, you have to divide it by two. And the character map, uh, character index we are call, going to call is 312. And this is a crafted font. And this is a pattern code which we are used to generate the DOCX file. So if you refer to the this source code, you're calling the fuzzard underscore two dot TTF and pack it to become the sample dot zip and convert to the sample dot DOCX file. So we go to command prompt to execute the Python code. As you can see, the TTF amended DOCX the pattern file is convert the TTF file to all TTF and insert into the library folder and generate the sample the DOCX file. If open the sample the DOCX file, you will cause the Windows X Pro operating system denial of service. And this is a third bug and fourth bug. Also, is a result of mutation FPGM uh, tables. And currently, actually, we focus on certain font sections such as GRIF and FPGM table only. For instance, bug one is belong to mutation of GRIF table, and bug two and three, four is the result of mutation FPGM table. Many crash dump cause the denial of service in Windows kernel. But for the exploitation, you need to use some trick or creativity to execute the cell code after you control the EIP or able to override the parameter of FNT underscore global graphic state type structure. And some parts are very interesting and able to embed into Office Word file and HTML, and some are not. And here is a some note we would like to share. First is focus on a field glyph before you start to fast, or else the root cause finding process is going to kill you. And you could include two tests for the TTF font file. For instance, open the TTF font file using fontview.exe. And second is calling the index from character set that is displayed the text in different size. But remember never ever fast the TTF font file start at font size equal to zero. And it's because many application such as Microsoft Microsoft Office Word file does not support font size zero. 
and there are many open source tools help you help you on through type font fuzzing and editing. For instance, Font Fox, Font Tools, Zero One Zero Binary Editor, and Virtual Caddy would help you in set up your TTF font fuzzing infra. They also have many excellent and expensive tools able to help you on font editing such and such as Font Lab Studio, Fontographer, and Bitfonter. And that's all for our presentation today. Thanks. <laughs> Any question? Yes? Uh, sorry, come again. Uh, you mean it's customized or uh, it's totally developed um, by uh, by us to pass the TTF font file and in the internet actually and in the internet actually got one um, TTF font parser is shared by the guys from Europe uh, you can refer it but it's not complete because some section, because TTF section is very complicated, like EBSC, EBLC, and EBDT, you can refer back to that code to further and add in more uh, section you going you want to pass. Uh, no, uh, this pass actually is a fully code by us using zero one zero, and we are going to share all the thing in internet after this talk. Pardon? Yeah, this is a, such a good question. For the box, uh, for the box one is really is exportable, but currently we're still working on uh, the cell code because our cell code actually got a minor problem to execute in Windows 8, and this bug actually uh, is reported, and the patch already released uh, last three weeks ago. It's a CVE. Two zero one three three one two nine, if not mistaken, and the bug, um, and the second bug and the bug, and the second bug actually is just a denial of service, because um, after we analysis the second bug, it just caused the infinity loop call in uh, Windows kernel. For us, it's not exploitable. It just for fun, yeah, but it's able to in, in embed it into the OCX file and send to the end user to launch the remote kernel denial service. And we already submit to the Microsoft for this second bug. And regarding the third and fourth bug, is the to be frank, um, frankly to say, I have no time to reverse in the third part and fourth part before I come to this conference. But the part three and part four is really is also is a FPG mutation. Pardon? Uh, as my experience uh, in last year, I tested uh, in Windows 7 before Windows 8 release. Um, actually, the GDI attack, you don't need to care about any restriction. It's just direct hit to the Win32k.sys file, and you can use some trick to totally fully control the. Come again? You mean this? this as, pro, as, I, as I just now I already mentioned, the first part actually we have some issue in the uh, cell code. Hopefully there is uh, everything is to be fine then we will release in internet next month. The first part. And the second part actually for us is just for fun. Yeah, for us. Based on our analysis, it's just for fun denial service. But it's uh, a little bit dangerous because you're still able to insert into the OCH file or HTML file 
to launch a remote um, denial of service to the end user. And the bug 3 and bug 4, we have no time to reverse engineering yet. Yeah, thanks. Any question? Um, to be honest, actually we have six. We have six, and one is report. Uh, two of it already reported. The other four we still pending, and we need some time to reverse engineering and confirm. Because some bug actually is just a bug. It's like software defect. It just caused the denial of service. It's no meaning at all. But for TTF, is the case is very special because you're able to insert into HTML, insert into DOCX, and have some fun with your friend, send to them, ask them to open it and crash their system. But it's not exploitable. Yeah. The first bug, yes. How many days of fuzzing? How many iterations? Iteration. How many different different. Um, basically, you just try one. You just try one. Um, based on the, your, your question, uh, you not need to. Uh, based on the, if you're doing fuzzing, it's not good. You just randomly pick the font file, and. Yeah. Um, I started in last year, August. So six months after six months, I got six. The other two, maybe it's a false alarm, I don't know. I, we got six, it's really. Yeah. And the TTF actually is very complicated in process. Like if you want to reverse engineering, the process is very huge. From the starting how application to starting to starting to call the TTF file and display the text is very complicated. And second thing is if you want to insert into DOCX file, HTML, some font, you just double click and will cause your system denial service. And some after you insert into DOCX, you just no respond at all. So you need to keep testing and testing and testing again. And my advice is if you want to start, want to do fuzzing in TTF, you don't need to go for different, many, many TTF font sample. You just concentrate in one. Because one enough for you to do the fuzzing because the structure is very complicated. You just concentrate in a certain grief. Other grief, you just use the tools to delete it. Because the root cause, if you get luck, you find a box. The reverse engineering, if you just want to, uh, your font file is content all the font set, all the character map, the process is going to kill you. So you just delete all the grief, just concentrate in two, and start to fast it. So if you get luck, you get the crash file, you start to analysis, the process will become more easier than you just simply grab the TTF file and fast it. So before you get started, you have to design, you have to think first the way how to, how you can, the how, how long you can go. I mean, you need to simplify your process first before you go to fast something. Any question? Yes? What line? What, what you think that, oh, the is Actually, the TTF fuzzing is hap um, if you refer back to CVSS, there are many TTF font bugs is already reported, and just only one is rest is catch all the attention in the world is Dugu Worm. Because Dugu Worm is success to embed into the OCX file. And this is and they are zero day to launch the attack in uh, SCADA system. And what made me to 
start to fast the TTF is because of the first is for the IE, many people is doing IE fuzzing, browser fuzzing, Google Chrome, and for the DOCX, I believe um, Tom from Microsoft, Ben Nagy, they are doing this, and TTF. As I know, just uh, my friend in Russian, Russia, his name is, I can't remember the name, and he and me only is doing a TTF. So I believe we still get a huge, a very bright future to get the crash. Because my thinking, if you want to start to fast, many people is start to fast a browser. Why not you start other things out like Bluetooth, fuzzing, then you can get high chance to get your crash file. But to be remembered is crash file doesn't mean that it's a, uh, it's uh, exploitable. It still depends on how creative you are to analysis it and insert the cell code and exploit it. So the process is totally different. Fuzzing, analysis, and exploitation. Any question? If no, thank you.